Her first appearance came in 1992 in Batman the Animated Series. Not just her first on-screen appearance, but her first appearance ever. It's hard to imagine one of the most popular DC Universe rogues was the invention of an animated show, but here we are. An ex-psychiatrist at Arkham Asylum, she turns to a life of crime with her beloved Joker. She starts as the Joker's new pet and a loyal henchwoman, but her development continues as her character takes a life of its own, and by the end of the series, she's a formidable villain in her own right. Catchphrases like Mr. J when referring to Joker and her use of the word puddin make her an instant quirky hit. She's a natural acrobat, carries a revolver with a cork in the barrel as her main weapon and has two pet hyenas. In the episode Harley and Ivy, we see how she first meets Poison Ivy as the two set out on a crime spree around Gotham together, and it results in Harley receiving some biological gift from her new friend and ally that makes her immune to toxins and enhance her resilience. In this show, she is dressed up as a court jester. Pale skin, black lipstick, a black eye mask, a full body jester suit quartered in black and red. Arlene Sorkin is the real life inspiration for this take on the character, and she lends her voice to Harley making her an iconic character in the DC animated universe, leading to comic book and live action appearances. And this is the birth of a pop culture icon. Look, Bats, when I was a doctor, I was always listening to other people's problems. Then I met Mr. J, who listened to me for a change and made everything fun. That same version of Harley also appeared in the new Batman Adventures in 97, which was a follow-up to Batman the Animated Series. Her origin story is all laid out in the episode Mad Love in flashbacks, as Harley plots to kill Batman as a present for her love. Dr. Harleen Quinzel, a young Arkham psychiatrist fascinated by the Joker, falls victim to his charm and manipulative tales of abuse. Her sympathy twists into love, and she believes his crimes are a cry for help. Overwhelmed, she becomes Harley Quinn, aids his escape, and embraces a life of crime by his side. This show is also the first time we see that giant mallet that's just too big to be realistically wieldy. But that'll never happen as long as there's a Batman around to torment my pudding. Hmm. In the three-part crossover event World's Finest of Superman, the animated series in 1997, Harley appears as Joker's partner in crime, helping him in his plot to kill Superman on behalf of Lex Luthor, while being tailed by Batman all the way. In 2000, Warner made Gotham Girls, a Flash animated web series focused on the daily lives of Gotham City's female characters. The look of Harley here is consistent with her DC animated universe appearance, just with a more basic style. Although a low budget production, this show marks Arlene Sorkin's return to the role of Harley Quinn. Do you ever feel like we're just drifting through life, not making any meaningful contribution to society? We get closure on the fate of the DCAU Harley Quinn in the feature-length animation Batman Beyond Return of the Joker in 2000. It turns out that Harley falls into a pit while fighting Batgirl during the final battle with the Joker, but her body is never found. It's later revealed that a toxin that Poison Ivy injected her with years before helped save her life, and she is now an old woman with two granddaughters, the Dee Dee twins, Delia and Deidre. <laughs> Break a grandmother's heart! I hope they throw the book at you! Harley is also the main bad girl in the 2002 Birds of Prey series. She exploits her position as a psychiatrist for a covert objective, to dominate New Gotham in a city left behind by Batman and the Joker. Although she doesn't wear a traditional costume throughout the show, her outfit in the final episode subtly nods to her classic animated look. In that episode, she acquires many human mind control abilities through experimental technology. She often mentions her beloved Mr. J, mourning his absence as a crime lord in Gotham and alluding to a previous relationship to the one depicted in the animated series. Ranting, writhing, stark, raving, full metal jacket, nuts! <laughs> There's the 2003 appearance of the DCAU Harley as she popped up again in static shock in the premiere episode of season 3. Harley and Poison Ivy trick a desperate teen named Nails into helping them by offering a fake cure for her condition. When Nails rebels, Harley ruthlessly knocks her out. Despite impressive acrobatics, she and Ivy are ultimately defeated. And as a therapist, I've been helping victims deal with their afflictions. Laughter is the best medicine, you know. <laughs> 
The next appearance was in the Justice League animated series in 2003. Harley appears in the two-part episode Wild Cards, where Batman uses her jealousy over the Joker to lead him right to his location. A new look came into play in 2007's The Batman, the first animated appearance that isn't connected to the DCAU. Voiced by Hinden Walsh this time, Harley is an ex-TV talk show host turned criminal, seeking revenge against the network for canceling her show after she gives Bruce Wayne a hard time as a guest. Even though her backstory is different, she still finds herself a part of the Joker's inner circle. The look isn't too different, but the headdress is larger and taller. Also, the inverted diamond pattern on the shoulders and the thighs isn't there. Her mask also fully conceals her eyes, making them appear solid white and huge without pupils. They sent me down in flames, so I'm returning the favor. Harley also pops up at the end of Justice League, The New Frontier in 2008, where she appears briefly as part of a montage of heroes and villains during the closing moments of the movie. In 2008's Batman Black and White, we got a Harley Quinn drained of color, but not of cunning. She tries to fool Batman with a flashlight that projects the bat symbol on the wall. Though Harley Quinn herself is absent in 2010's Justice League Crisis on Two Earths, she's represented by Harley, the pet monkey of the Jester, alternate reality's heroic version of the Joker. This agile monkey's outfit mirrors Harley's, hinting at the Joker's twisted treatment of her as a pet in the main timeline. In Batman the Brave and the Bold in 2010, the black and white look continues, even though this is a full color show. Harley swaps the classic Jester's outfit for a black flapper look with a sleek dress, headwear complete with a gem, bleached white hair, a mole on her cheek, and plenty of loose jewelry. She teams up with Batmite, who has a crush on her, to save Joker from Jokermite, who is rebelling against him. In an interesting twist, Harley doesn't really understand her love's obsession with constantly trying to beat Batman. Whenever Batman's around, that's all Mr. Joker cares about. It's like no one else exists. A stop-motion version of the classic DCAU look Harley appears in the Aquaman Appreciation Party skit in the 2012 Robot Chicken DC comic special, where she and the other DC villains use a cake as a Trojan horse to sneak their way into the Watchtower. This is the first time the legendary Tara Strong voices Harley outside of video games. It's not his best. In 2013, the Lego version of Harley debuted in Lego Batman the Movie, DC Superheroes Unite. The look is based on the classic red and black Jester outfit, but morphed into a Lego version. The Jester hat looks great as a Lego helmet. Riddler, baby? You should've let you drive, I know! In Justice League The Flashpoint Paradox, The Flash's journey into the past to save his mother results in Harley being replaced by Yo-Yo. This is still clearly Harley Quinn, but in this reality, she's not the comical court jester. She's a Yo-Yo-wielding henchwoman for the Joker, and her bodysuit is crimson, and she has giant blonde pigtails and a pink eye visor. She's shown fighting Batman in the altered timeline. Cyborg? I surrender to you. Arrow's Suicide Squad episode features a cameo of Harley, seen only in silhouette. Rejected from the team for being too unstable, she tries to help Diggle with his marriage problems. 2014 was the year things changed for Harley Quinn. For the first time, she appears in an animated feature in a more sexualized way. Her costume is skimpier, a figure-hugging tank top and leggings combination in the quartered red and black scheme, showing more skin than any previous appearance. The Jester's hat is still there, as is the pale makeup. Joining the Suicide Squad for an Arkham Intel retrieval mission, she hooks up with Deadshot, but quickly rejoins Joker after his escape. This triggers a total mess as he tries to kill Deadshot out of jealousy. This film features Harley using both her iconic mallet and a baseball bat in fights. New guy? That's right. You're not jealous, are ya? That's him. 2015's Justice League Gods and Monsters Chronicles includes a character called Harlequin. It's actually a separate character, but she closely resembles Harley. Bruce Timm admitted he intentionally designed Harlequin to resemble Harley Quinn. He also had her killed by Batman as a form of retaliation against the New 52 for their redesign of Harley. The look is very overly sexualized. She's basically wearing underwear, but the pale makeup, half red, half black hair, and her affinity for a hammer make it obvious that the creator wanted to put a spin on Harley here. DC Superhero Girls reimagines classic characters like Harley Quinn to appeal to a young female audience. 
In this series, Harleen, a vivacious teen and circus performer's daughter, is best friends with Pamela Isley, aka Poison Ivy. Inspired by superheroes, Harleen's life changes when Pamela gains plant controlling powers after a Star Labs accident. Harleen supports Pamela, later becoming Harley Quinn and attending Superhero High. There, she's the mischievous class clown who loves puns and prioritizes pranks over studying. Her look is a fresh take on the character. Red black tights, jean shorts, blue red boots, a studded belt, and a black, white, and red checkerboard top. Her blonde pigtails feature blue and red streaks, and while she has a classic eye mask, her face lacks the pale makeup. This look, a departure from the original court jester style, hints at the character's future direction. Ha! We pulled out the surprise, and Bratz didn't even know we was here! A year later, the film DC Superhero Girls Superhero High follows the series by adding a story between the first and second seasons, and as always, Harley is featured as the mischievous member of the class. Lego Harley is the next version to make another appearance in Lego DC Comics Superheroes Justice League Gotham City Breakout. She partners with Poison Ivy, Joker, Scarecrow, and Penguin and helps them to kidnap the Justice League members. In a car chase scene, she shoots bananas at the Batplane. Sorry, traffic in Gotham will drive you batty! A second DC Superhero Girls movie follows that, titled Hero of the Year where Harley competes with the other girls for the award for being the best student. She fights with shadow demons when Dark Opal attacks. <laughs> for most casuals, Suicide Squad in 2016 was the first time they saw Harley Quinn, but in reality, this was nothing like the original Harley Quinn at all. Gone was the court jester aesthetic, and in was Margot Robbie's unhinged, almost slutty cheerleader look that became the default due to the hype surrounding this movie. I mean, that weird kiss with Batman in the flashback scene. Am I right? She has bleached blonde hair and pigtails. With one dyed pink and the other blue, pale makeup, a heart tattoo on her cheek, eyeshadow that matches her dyed hair, red lipstick, and she wears a raglan shirt, hot pants with fishnets, and a choker with puddin written on it. As for a weapon, she carries a baseball bat that is engraved with the words good night, though her mallet makes a brief cameo. Her highlight in the movie sees her tricking and ultimately defeating the Enchantress, saving her friends and all of humanity. Another standout moment is that flashback where we see Harley's journey, meeting the Joker becoming Harley Quinn with a nod to her classic look before evolving into the Harley portrayed by Robbie, including the epic car chase scene with Jared Leto's Joker behind the steering wheel and Batman in full chase as they try to escape. Some elements of her story are retained, she still uses Mr. J when speaking to Joker, and she was still his psychiatrist until she fell in love. I lost my put in, but you can get him back, right? You promise? In 2016, Harley made her first Teen Titans Go appearance in her classic outfit. As the series goes on, Harley's look starts to match Margot Robbie's version. You can see this in the Jam episode, where she, Ivy, and Catwoman recruit Starfire and Raven for their roller derby team. I get it, we're the bad guys, but when we break out, we're totally getting the team back together, right? The Lego Batman movie featured an Arkhamverse-style Harley sporting a Smilex shirt, a nod to the Joker's deadly laughing gas from the 1989 Batman film. Her movie highlight involves stealing the projector and breaking the villains out of the space prison. You're too good for Batman. He needs to open his eyes and see what it feels like when you're not around. In 2017, we also saw a return of the classic Harley Quinn look from the animated series. She returns along with her loyal hyenas, but in this show, she isn't directly affiliated with the Joker. There are hints that she knows him, like a picture on her bag, but she works with Poison Ivy. We also see a part of her backstory where she worked as a behaviorist in Star Labs before leaving for Gotham to become a psychiatrist. Harley Quinn? Batman's arch enemy? American screwball sweetheart? The DC Superhero Girls also returned in that same year. Harley, alongside Beast Boy, is a sports commentator during the Intergalactic Games. In Batman and Harley Quinn, also from 2017, we got a rare team-up of Batman, Nightwing, and Harley. She plays a role in stopping Poison Ivy and Floronic Man's plans. Initially living a low-key life after parole, Harley is reluctantly recruited by Nightwing, using their past connection to convince her to help. Despite initial resistance, Harley agrees and leads them to Ivy's hideout. Harley's emotional connection to Ivy proves crucial. While Batman and Nightwing struggle to stop the villains physically, 
Harley appeals to Ivy's friendship, ultimately swaying her to abandon the plan. It's Harley's unorthodox solution, using fire against a plant-based villain that clinches the victory for the heroes. The story ends with Harley returning to her civilian life as Dr. Quinzel, though with a twist. She now helms a reality show focused on helping people confront their fears. This ending hints at Harley's potential for good, even if delivered in her unique way. Played by Melissa Rauch from The Big Bang Theory, the look is the classic one, as it should be, since this movie is part of DCAU. The DC Superhero Girls also debuted in LEGO form in 2017 with Brain Drain. The look is the same as the previous Superhero Girls features, but this time, blockified in true LEGO style. Eclipso is messing with the memory of some of the girls, and it leads them to act strangely, including uploading an embarrassing video of Harley online before they realize something isn't quite right. A deleted scene from Batman vs. Two-Face offers an idea of Harley Quinn's potential look, had she appeared in the original 1966 animated TV show. Her look is like the Arkhamverse style, but with a 60s twist. Other than the deleted scene, she appears in the film as Harleen Quinzel, Dr. Hugo Strange's assistant. Jeez, that looks like it smarts. In DC Superheroes vs. Eagle Talon, we see an anime version of Harley Quinn for the first time. In this parody of the Justice League, Harley is in her classic costume, but her lips are red, and her bodysuit has a large white star-shaped collar. She finds herself in Japan with the Joker as he tries to steal the Eagle Talon Society's weapons. The flapper Harley from Brave and the Bold showed up in the Scooby-Doo crossover in 2018. This time, she's in Arkham Asylum with Ivy, wearing a black and white striped prison uniform. She still has her giant mallet, which she swings at Shaggy and Scooby before she and the other villains take part in a food fight in the lunch hall. The Arkhamverse version of Harley Quinn appears in Ready Player One. During a nightclub scene, IROK interrupts her in a booth, forcing her to leave. We see her again later, dancing with the Joker. Harley also appeared in the second animated Suicide Squad movie in 2018, titled Hell to Pay. This look is a blend between the classic red and black with her clothing, and the blonde pigtails of the modern take, with denim shorts and blue and pink eye makeup that are a clear nod to the Margot Robbie version. She carries a baseball bat, reminiscent of the live-action movie, despite the iconic giant mallet featured on some promotional artwork. Hey, we got cheese dogs and chicken nuggies! Fans waited for Harley Quinn on Gotham, and Echo arrived in 2018. Though not Harley, her jester outfit and loyalty to the villainous Jeremiah hint at the inspiration. Echo leads Jeremiah's cult and assists in his attack on Gotham. After Jeremiah's downfall, the devoted Echo remains his nurse. She's tragically killed by Barbara in the show's finale. Don't you want to experience this gift for yourself? Batman Ninja gave us a different take on an anime version of Harley with a new look. She has half red and half purple hair that is tied in pigtails, and her eyes are bright green. Her costume appears more medieval, but sticks to the classic red and black. The collar is frilled, and much larger than in other appearances. As usual, She's side by side with Joker and even pretends to be an innocent bystander that he's about to crush to distract Batman. She breaks out some ninja moves here, wielding a pistol along with her iconic mallet, which is the biggest we've ever seen. What do you take us for? We knew you'd have men hiding in the water! Next up, we got more doses of superhero girls. Starting with LEGO DC Superhero Girls Super Villain High, where Harley teams up with villain girls against her old friends. DC Superhero Girls Legends of Atlantis follow that. Harley uses her psychologist skills to help Raven with her self-control. Teen Titan Go's cute Harley appears in Teen Titans Go to the Movies, aiding Joker's rampage with bombs and torpedoes. Then in 2019, the LEGO Superhero Girls returned in a 22-minute special that was split into five parts. Other than participating in a football-like sports game, Harley doesn't do anything here. Then. Harley showed up in a cameo in the Lego Movie 2, the second part. She's seen in Batman's Fortress when Sweet Mayhem captures the five main master builders, commenting that going to the Sistar system to rescue them would be a suicide mission. DC Superhero Girls also got a do-over in 2019 with a complete update to the animation and story. Harley now has two distinct looks. Her look out of costume, which is a nod to the old DC Superhero Girls look with blonde pigtails, blue and red clothing, 
Her in-costume look is back to the classic red and black suit that matches the original Harley perfectly. Introduced as an enemy alongside the supervillain girls, Harley's relationship to the team is complicated. Though initially an opponent, Harley has cooperated with the superhero girls on several occasions. She teamed up with Supergirl for a school project, helped Wonder Woman, and even joined the group for Halloween trick-or-treating. These instances suggest a potential for Harley to be more than just a villain, hinting at a possible shift in her dynamic with the superhero girls. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. Harley had a small part in Justice League vs. The Fatal Five, and this was a reappearance of the version from Batman and Harley Quinn. We see Harley when she joins Poison Ivy in an Arkham Asylum uprising, triggered accidentally by Starboy. Batman quickly apprehends them both before things get too out of control. Harley next returned in the Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crossover animated movie. It's the classic animated series look of the character once again. Harley witnesses Shredder at Arkham, playfully calling him over to admire her makeup and his mask. After Joker escapes and frees her, he tasks her with using mutagen. Harley is mutated into a hyena. She enjoys watching Batman's transformation and thwarts Leonardo's attempt to cure Batman and battles Robin. So, you gonna introduce me to your new turtle pals or what? In 2019's Batman Hush, the hell to pay version of Harley is back, wearing a DCAU style costume. This time, while Bruce Wayne and Selina Kyle are on a date at the opera, Harley appears on stage and knocks out the performer to address the audience, where she announces that she and her henchmen are there to rob everyone in attendance and for her to kill Bruce Wayne. She tries to shoot him numerous times, but he evades her long enough for Selina to slip away and for Catwoman to attack her. Their fight takes them up to the rafters, where Harley drops a lighting fixture on Selina's head, knocking her down, but Batman catches her before she hits the stage below. Harley, seeing the display, states her personal disgust before escaping through a fire exit. Okay, freak. Who are you and what do you know about my pudding? A completely new version also debuted in 2019 in her own show, Harley Quinn. Voiced by Kaylee Cuoco, famous from The Big Bang Theory in the series, it picks up after Harley and Joker's relationship comes to an end. She's actually together with Poison Ivy in the show, and that caused some fans to hate on it. But overall, this is an interesting take on the character. Harley is straight up crazy in this one, and it's not for kids. The universe is also really weird. Supervillains are allowed to live regular lives while not committing crimes, for example. Her look is similar to Margot Robbie's version, but with a costume update for a more classic style, featuring a red and black quartered vest top and hot pants. Her hairstyle remains true to the live-action movie's blonde dip-dyed pigtails. The first time we met, we tried to kill each other, and we became friends, and then we fell in love, and then... Sorry, wait, why are we doing this? Because everyone knows all this shit already. Birds of Prey was the second coming of Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn in 2020. This time, her overall look is the same slutty bubblegum style, but she appears in various outfits during the film, usually some combination of some short shorts and bright or sparkly colors up top. The story follows Harley's rough breakup with the Joker. Seeking a fresh start, she gets a pet hyena in a new apartment, but her past catches up, leaving her facing revenge from those she wronged. Harley becomes entangled with the gangster Sionis, who needs her to retrieve a diamond stolen by a young orphan named Cass. Initially clashing, Harley and Cass eventually bond over their shared loneliness. Harley's attempt to bargain with Sionis for Cass's protection backfires. She teams up with Dinah, Montoya, and Bertinelli, women who all have scores to settle with Sionis. They take down his gang and become the vigilante group Birds of Prey. Harley adopts Cass as her apprentice and launches her own business. Kid, if that burrito doesn't make you shit, I don't know what will. <laughs> The DC animated movie universe was brought to an end with Justice League Dark Apocalypse War in 2020. Harley now leads the Suicide Squad on Strikers Island. Joker and Walder are both dead. She joins forces with the remaining Justice League to try and save Earth from parademons. Harley gets new kryptonite loaded guns. Parademons are vulnerable to Superman's DNA, which Doomsday also carried. The movie ends with the remaining DC heroes meeting their end but not before Harley goes out in a blaze of glory, gleefully blasting away at enemies and expressing her excitement about finally reuniting with Joker. So drink up, esteemed ladies and gents of the Suicide Squad, because tomorrow we take back this planet! 
in the DC sequence in Space Jam A New Legacy, Harley appeared briefly. It's a pre-transformation version of the character, and she can be seen through the train window next to Alfred. Margot Robbie returned in 2021's The Suicide Squad. This time, she wears a red dress, and her ponytails are red and black. Harley rejoins Task Force X for a mission in Corto Maltese, where she's betrayed, escapes a military attack, and is captured by the President. Discovering his plan to use Starro, she kills him and breaks free. Recaptured and tortured, Harley escapes again, joining a new rescue team led by Flag and Bloodsport. Harley aids the team in infiltrating Jotunheim. After a mishap prematurely releases Starro, she and her allies fight back. She uses a teammate's javelin to stab Starro's eye, allowing Ratcatcher 2's rats to defeat it. Harley and the surviving team members are rescued, now free. 69. 69? The next appearance was in the 2021 adaptation of the Injustice video games into an animated feature. Harley's design is based on her Injustice 2 standard gear set, which is a red and black leather suit and jacket. She has her blonde dip-dyed pigtails and over-the-top makeup. She helps Joker trick Superman into killing Lois Lane, which leads Superman to descend into madness and the killing of millions as Metropolis is destroyed. After Superman kills the Joker in anger, Harley becomes a vigilante in her own right. Here comes the boom! <laughs> we got to bid farewell to the superhero girls Harley in 2022 in Teen Titans Go! and DC Superhero Girls Mayhem in the Multiverse, which was a crossover event. Harley's identity as Harleen is finally revealed to her classmates by Barbara, but by the end of the movie, Harley Quinn turns to the light and becomes a hero. Then, Harley popped up again in Bat Wheels, also in 2022. This is a show for young kids, and so, Harley is portrayed as a young girl, punkish in appearance, wearing a pink jacket and trousers and a black t-shirt, with her dip-dyed pigtails under a crash helmet. She drives a car that looks kind of like a hyena, with a giant hammer attached. Cause that's what I'm always doing, you know? Robin stuff! In Scooby-Doo and Crypto 2, released in 2023, Harley appears as one of the villains plaguing Metropolis after the disappearance of the Justice League. The classic black and red look comes back for this animated crossover with Scooby-Doo. A spin-off to the Harley Quinn adult animated series has been announced. Kite Man Hell Yeah will release in 2024, and Kaylee Cuoco's Harley will be bound to show up a few times during the show. We're also getting a new anime Harley later this year, which is heavily inspired by Margot Robbie's version. Suicide Squad Isekai looks great and this is going to be the best anime Harley we've ever had. Wearing a version of her black and red outfit including boots, ripped tights, hot pants, a jacket and tiny tank top, and the now usual blonde dip dyed hairstyle, heart tattoos on the cheek, and crazily swinging a baseball bat. What's not to love? Harley Quinn. In 2024, the appearance everyone's talking about is Joker Folia Do, where Lady Gaga will be the third live action Harley Quinn this time in a completely different setting, in the crazy world of these standalone Joker films. It's a good job it's Gaga. It looks like there will be several musical numbers for Harley in this one. And the twist, she appears to be a patient alongside Joker, but that could all be his mind playing tricks on him, and a fantasy of escaping Arkham Asylum with her at his side. It does look like we'll be seeing her in red and black, with a white and black diamond pattern shirt in at least one part of the movie, which is great to see. 